Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and welcome to part two of my advanced coordination series, where I'm showing you how to develop an idea all the way from the beginning, which is just playing basic coordination with the right foot under it, as we did in our first video, to the end, which is going to be soloing over this. So the ostinato we're using is this 2-3 sun clave ostinato, which is this. And in that first video, we did it all kinds of different ways while soloing or improvising with the bass drum. So today we're going to be working with our hands only. Uh, in other words, playing an ostinato with both feet and playing different stickings on top. So this is an important kind of thing if you want to solo over this ostinato. We'll also be looking at a little bit of uh, playing groove time over it with the cascara. So we'll start out today uh, in my book on page seven with these rhythms. And the ostinato we're going to use on the feet is this. So you'll see that on the screen here. And then um, on your hands, you're just going to start out by playing just single strokes over that. So. And you're gonna do that until it feels completely comfortable. Just like we talked about in the first video, repetition is the key here. So you'll also do it not only on the snare drum, but around the kit. that for quite a while until once again it's comfortable because a lot of times when you're moving around that affects the timing of your fills and your solos and your groove so we want to make sure that as we move this way that doesn't affect the coordination the next thing you're going to start to do is apply stickings now there's a lot of ways you can do this you can go and, and open up stick control and do those first couple pages you can do rudimental stickings like paradiddles, so. And so forth. That's great, but eventually you're gonna to need to have a vast vocabulary. So what I like to do is take particular stickings and then use accents. Accent studies are really the best way to learn how to phrase and you know play musically, put accents or emphasis anywhere. So to do that, we'll look at page seven. We've done this many times before on this channel. And we'll start out by just playing 16th notes, alternating and catching these accents. So. So that'll be familiar uh, to any of you who've worked on my hand technique exercises. So we'll take the metronome here, we'll put it once again at the speed of 100, and we'll do two or three lines of this for you. And then I'll also play some around the drums with those accents. One, two, three, four. So once again, you go through this page, and uh, we also talked about in that first video about creating a booklet of rhythms, and you'd go through all those different rhythms. You can also do the uh, next page, which is page eight, and that works really great like this. One, two, three, four.
Now make sure you stay really relaxed when you're doing that and don't hesitate to repeat each measure over and over again. So we'll go back to page seven now and we'll try some different stickings. So let's say I just play paradiddles and play these accents within them. So. That's a great way to practice this and it's difficult, especially over this ostinato. Let's try that. One, two, three, four. Now you'll notice how light I'm playing my bass drum. That's important. This type of music, it's not a lot of bass drum in it, norm normally none. So just play that very, very light, okay? The next way is to do diddles on everything. And you could do this a little faster, and this is much more relevant to soloing. So we'll try this at 120. One, two, three, four. You see there that line three I started playing around the toms. So uh, a really good way to practice that. So by the time you go through four or five of these different stickings, you've got some coordination going on there to solo. The next thing to do is try to play just around the drums, turn the music over, put it away, and then just play. I like to practice this stuff with my snares off. And what I'll do is I'll just start and play some ideas Try not to get tripped up. If I do, I'll keep going. I won't stop. So let's try that. We'll go a little slower here at 110. One, two, three, four. So I'll do all different kinds of ideas, I'll stretch things, I'll play triplets, I'll try to play a little melodically and try to use different stickings and just improvise for as long as you possibly can like that. It's really fun too. Once you get it going, uh, I've done that for hours at a time, uh, but getting started is the hard thing. So again, doing these exercises is what's going to help you there. So the next step is to get an ostinato going with the right hand and then improvise or, you know, read the rhythms with the left hand. So a good one to use is the Cascara, which goes like this. You see that on the screen. And then our left hand will play the rhythms from page seven. So we'll try that at quarter note equals 100. One, two, three, four. Now that's a tricky one, so you're going to want to start slow and do each measure over and over again. And if you have a lot of trouble, what you can do is do that kind of beat addition thing I did in the first video. So in other words, one beat at a time and loop it. I'll show you that with the first measure. One, two, three, four.
So you see, each time I do it, I do it twice and then I loop it and then add another beat. And soon you'll get the whole measure. And then you go on to the next measure, do the same thing. Again, lots of repetition. Take your time, stay relaxed. That's important. So one of the things about these rhythms is they're very, very useful. You play this in a rhythm called the mambo. So. Also improvise and like I said before add lib to that which sounds like this one two so that's your main goal is to be able to improvise that right hand and left hand together over that constant foot ostinato. One thing that helps me when I'm getting a little bit, you know, flux summoned by, by these rhythms is to put my mind's eye on a particular sound. So when you're doing something like that that's very complicated, I can focus on that cascara or that clave. So in other words, I'm hearing just that sound. The rest of my body goes on automatic pilot. It's kind of almost like an outer body experience there, but if you concentrate enough, you can really do that, so. So it's especially important when you're playing those over the bar line figures and you've got to focus your mind's eye on that clave. Difficult, but totally doable if you practice this stuff enough. I use a lot of timbali phrasings, Afro-Cuban, even Brazilian kind of open wide phrasings. We'll try some of that now in this closing solo.